How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Singh here, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a little bit of a deep dive into how to create Voronoi patterns using Mesh Mixer. I've already made a video that describes the process of applying a Voronoi pattern, and you can find a link to that at the top right of your screen. But in this video, I wanna focus a little bit more on the Voronoi pattern itself and how we can influence the overall shape using a few minor changes. So here we're looking at the same shape. This was a just a cylinder that was extruded using the Mesh Mix functionality in Mesh Mixer. And that cylinder, I made three different models that look very, very different. And I wanna take a minute to talk about that process. So I'm gonna temporarily suppress that and I'm gonna bring our three bodies in. This is the cylinder as imported into Mesh Mixer and you'll see it's more of a high poly model. So it has a lot of triangles. This is the second model, which was decimated partially. And then this model had about a 95% decimation. And you can see this model is no longer cylindrical, it's actually fairly sharp on all edges. So when creating a Voronoi pattern on these models, you can imagine that each line is going to create a leg and each triangle is going to be an open cell. So on a model like this, there aren't a whole lot of large triangles and you can imagine the cells would be fairly close together. Whereas here we can start to see some larger triangles which would give us more of an air gap. And on the most decimated model, we have the largest cell size so you can imagine that without a whole lot of modification, if we apply that Voronoi pattern by using make pattern and selecting dual edges, we get a very tight pattern here. So there isn't really a whole lot of room between those cells because each triangle is being converted. Now, if we come over here and do that same thing, you'll see now in the preview, we've got larger, more open cells. So instead of a very tight pattern here, we have some larger air gaps. And when we apply that to this model, you can see that this is the largest air gap of all, and that's due to the very low number of faces. So we can apply this to our models by using different amounts of polygons in different areas. So you can imagine if this was one cylinder split into three separate sections, that's how you get this type of geometry in one piece. So you'd be able to go from a tighter air gap to a larger one in one solid model. So when you're creating a Voronoi pattern, it's important to look at the size of the cell when you're thinking about what your final product is gonna look like. If you want a very small, tight spacing, you wanna have a higher poly count. And if you wanna have large open air gaps, then you'll wanna decrease that poly count. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or leave a comment in the comments section below, and I will do my best to get back to you. As always, thanks for watching, and have fun printing. 